The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. The millions of American men and women who have labored, and today labor still, with hand and mind and heart, to build and to preserve a great free nation, the Cavalcade of America proudly dedicates the unending story of a new way of life in a new world. On this program, the Cavalcade of America presents John Brown of Osawatomie, an original radio play written by Robert Tallman. Starring in the role of John Brown, the strange zealot who stalked the land in the cause of abolition, is John McIntyre of the Cavalcade Players. The Cavalcade Orchestra and the original musical score are under the direction of Don Voorhees. DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents John Brown as our drama on the Cavalcade of America. John Brown is a legend, but that legend was a man. A wrathful, white-bearded giant of a man, rangy of frame and with eyes that burned relentlessly, mercilessly with prophetic fire. It was late in the fall of 1855 that John Brown strode into the territory of Kansas. There were a round dozen men lounging about the stove in the parlor of the Border Inn, and there were rifles across their knees. The innkeeper scurried to the door. Come right in, sir. I'll help with your boxes. I have the strength to do my own carrying. I thank you. As you say, sir, you'll be wanting lodging? I'll be wanting a plain bed for sleeping. You a preaching man? Hang the preaching. The words in the book for all to read. Well spoken. There'll be too many hypocritical Bible-reading free staters in these parts. I didn't catch your name, sir. Tava's my name, and I ain't no free stater. Well, sir, my name is John Brown. I read the Bible, and with the Lord's help, I aim to make Kansas a free state. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear that, boys? So you're going to make Kansas free for the slave runners and abolitionists. Where do you aim to start, Mr. Brown? In Osawatomie, where my sons live. Well, boys, maybe we'd better break the news to Mr. Brown. Sure, tell him. Mr. Brown, take a look at this. A rifle, I believe. You're a smart man, Mr. Brown. Are you still aiming to settle in Osawatomie? That's right. Well, you ain't, because you won't live to get there. Mr. Brown, you Hold your careful. tongue. You can take these boxes now. My hands have other work to do. Mr. Brown. Take the boxes. Now, Mr. Carver, listen to the word as it's written in the book. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Thy right hand hath been glorious in power. Brown, I'm warning you. Thy right hand, O oh Lord. <laughs> hey, hey, what are you doing? No. 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 Ah! Thy right hand, O oh Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. You'd best get a doctor for that man. I fear he may be badly cut. That I will, Mr. Brown. You may show me to my quarters now. There's much work for the morrow.
Oh, it's good to have you here, Nosawatomie. What do you think of Kansas, what you've seen of it? It's a good land, son, but there's a blight upon it. Aye, you speak the truth, Mr. Brown. They're out to finish us settlers, and they may yet succeed. The slave staters, you mean, Mr. Thompson? No question of politics, Mr. Brown. We're living under a shadow here. You speak strangely. Come to the door a minute, Mr. Brown. I'll show you something. Better stand back a piece till I see if it's all right. Hen, shut that door. Have you gone, Dad? It's all right, Wealthy. Step outside, Mr. Brown. Now look across those fields. What do you see? I don't see anything but darkness. That's it, nothing but darkness. Used to be on a clear night like this, you'd see a light on that ridge over there. Two or three to the north. A few miles along the road past the forks. About a dozen in all free staters' cabins in this section. What happened? Listen. Wealthy, put out the lamp. Horseman. They ride through this section every night like that. Sometimes the settlers pack up and leave when they ride past a place the first few times. They don't leave, well, some get shot and others just uh, get burned out. Depending if they put up a fight. Who are the men who've done this? Some of them are hired hoodlums from the border. Some are settlers from these parts. They're the ones who burnt the town of Lawrence. Kansas is bleeding, Mr. Brown. Write down the list of those settlers, Thompson. Well, we know pretty much who they are. There's Doyle, he lives back of the forks. Over on Potawatomi Creek. Prepare the list, Thompson. Write down all their names. It's part of the Lord's work. Now that we're all gathered together, we'll have the box placed right over here. Pretty heavy, Pa. What's in it? You'll find out later. Now we will proceed. And without the women, if you please. As long as my husband's going to stay, I stay too. Very well, then. You will keep silent. Now I ask you men, how long do you think you'll keep your homes with the devil's terror abroad in this land? Maybe the army will help us. The army sent men to Lawrence. Did that stop them from burning the town? Now listen to me. We've gathered the names of those settlers over on the Pottawatomie Creek. Settlers who are riding and murdering out there on those plains this very night. Striking down three men in the name of slavery. I propose the ruthless and systematic killing of these instruments of the devil. Killing? Why? Why did? Mr. Brown, I... I'm afraid you don't quite understand... We come here as peace-loving men to till the soil. Hen's right, Father Brown. There's no blood on the hands of our men, and we don't want it. It says in the book, thou shalt not kill. Aye, the book. An eye for an eye. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. I broke the jaws of the wicked. My judgment with a robe and a diadem. Who is it? Who is there to say we are not righteous if we act? Salmon. Fetch the box over here. Here, Pa. Take this key and open it. Sabres. Aye, what? Sabres. And you carried them all the way from Ohio. Aye, the sword and the weapon of the Lord. Sabres ready, men? Yes, sir. Follow me. Yes, sir. Watch the horses, Jason. Aye, Father. Who is it? It's I, John Brown, with the Lord's vengeance. 
Who do you... Oh. Fetch your men, folk, Mrs. Doyle. They're sleeping above. Then call to them. What do you want of my men? Call them. Well, Call them. Jonathan? Jonathan! Wake up, Jonathan! Yeah, yeah. What is it? What do you want? Come down here, Jonathan. There's... There's trouble. All right. All right. Hot and blue blazers. Well, what do you want here? Hand over your rifle, peaceable Doyle. Why, of all the... You don't have to take it. Throw this rifle outside, then. Sammy, fetch the others. Your turn is first, Jonathan Doyle. What's the matter? You rode with the rangers when they murdered the Weaver family in their beds. You set the torch to the house of my son's God-fearing neighbor. Look at your hand, Jonathan Doyle. My, My hands? They're covered with blood. You don't see it, but the Lord does. So start praying. Start praying, I tell you. Praying? The Lord's Prayer, if you can remember it. Listen, I... The Lord's Prayer. And start walking out through that door. Oh, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be the name. Thy kingdom... Mr. Lincoln. Morning, James. The papers from New York, uh, I put them on your desk, sir. Thank you, James. You reckon them papers will have more about that John Brown and all his killing of them folks out in Kansas? James, what do you think of this John Brown? Well, I, I don't right know what I think about John Brown, Mr. Lincoln, sir. There's a colored man right here in Springfield. he has been to school. He don't even know what to think. Well, Mr. Horace Greeley thinks he's fine. Says the Easterners ought to send him money and guns. And what do Mr. Abraham Lincoln think, sir? He's wrong, James. He's wrong. They'll be out after him like a hunted animal. No matter what he thinks is right, there can be no justification for his kind of violence and bloodshed. Yes, James, I reckon old Brown will go down in history as about the wrongest right man who ever lived. Wanted, dead or alive, John Brown, murderer, assassin, arsonist, and traitor, the state of Kansas. Any information leading to his apprehension will be liberally rewarded. A hunted animal, and the search went on. A specter of terror and violence was abroad in the land, and men feared it, and whispered of John Brown as they would of a whirlwind of fire. But to John Brown, it was the hour of vengeance. In the East, he appeared and vanished at secret meetings, rallying men to his cause. And the search was at its height in the summer of 1859, when a white-bearded old man who said his name was John Smith settled with his family on a farm in Maryland that nestled back in the hills, the hills that rose to the west towards Harper's Ferry. Good morning, Miss Smith. How are things going out at the farm? Oh, fine. Just fine. Here's the order for our week's provisions. You can just leave it if you like. I'll be coming out your way later on. I'll fetch them for you. Oh, no, you mustn't do that. I mean, just put them on the buckboard. I don't mind. As you say, Miss, it's a right smart lot of provisions to carry that way. How many men folk you got out there, anyhow? Well, there's father and the girls and my brother's. Well, there's a baker's dozen of us anyway. Well, they sure eat more than any family I ever heard of. Guess that's the way they grow up north. What state you say you all hear from? Uh... Oh, I... Pennsylvania, that is. 
Uh, by the way, here's a newspaper from Washington. Maybe uh, your paw would be interested. Tell him the item on page three. Got it marked there. Goings on. Right around here. It was on page three. Here it is, Pa. To John Floyd, Secretary of War, Washington, D.C. Sir, I have discovered the existence of a secret association having for its general object the liberation of the slaves of the South. The leader of the movement is John Brown, late of Kansas. Oh, pa, you'd better read it. But they know all about it, about Harper's Ferry. Daughter! I've told you never to say that name aloud. Sorry, Pa. But I'm afraid. Terribly afraid. The Lord will see to it that our work is done. The Lord was going to see to it that we got the men in arms we need, too. Dolph Thompson, you blaspheme. Hold your tongue. Ah, uh, Dolph's right. The abolitionists have let us down. And if we don't do something soon, we'll lose the few men we've got. Are you certain of that, Stevens? I am, sir. They're sick and tired of being cooped up in this place hiding. They'd like anything better. Anything. Very well, Stevens. You may tell the men we carry out the original plan as regards Harper's Ferry tomorrow. <laughs> The morning of October 17th, 1859. Hey, Phelps, what's wrong? We didn't send no word for number 16 to stop here. Ain't got no time to talk, Jerry. Send this telegram to Washington. Oh, well, what's don't, the matter? Don't talk. Just send this message. Train held up five hours at Harper's Ferry by insurrectionists. Say they have come to free slaves. Leader says this is the last train to pass Bridge East or West. Lieutenant Stewart reporting to Colonel Robert E. Lee for duty. Here are your orders, Lieutenant. Follow them to the letter. They come direct from the president. The president? Yes. Your job is to capture the men at the West Bridge. Alive, if possible. The capture of Brown himself is entrusted to me. You have your orders, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Harper's Ferry, the old engine house, the night of October 17th, 1859. Captain Brown! Yes, Kagi, what do you see? The troops are splitting, forming two cordons. They must be making way for the cavalry. There's nothing to do now but wait. I can't understand why we failed. I was so sure that the slaves would join us when they heard. The cavalry is coming into the enclosure now, Captain Brown. Stuart's dismounting. You better come up here and have a look. I will. Captain Brown! Captain Brown! You have your last chance to surrender. Send one man under a flag of truce. We'll admit him. Kagi, unbar the door. Tell me your business, sir. Colonel Robert E. Lee sends his terms for surrender in this paper. Your men will be escorted from here in safety, awaiting the orders of the president. No. No, I prefer to die here. I uh, will deliver your answer to Colonel Lee. What did he say? He won't surrender. Captain Brown! Yes? The crowd outside, they're pulling through the gate. Coming this way. Stand down there, Peggy. We'll meet them at attention. Your 
Baron Brown. You have been found guilty of treason, of conspiring with slaves to rebel, and of murder in the first degree. Have you anything to say why sentence should not be pronounced upon you? I have, may it please the court, a few words to say. Had I interfered in the manner which I admit has been fairly proved, had I so interfered in behalf of the powerful, the intelligent, the so-called great, or in behalf of any of their friends, and suffered and sacrificed what I have in this interference, it would have been deemed all right. Every man in this court would have deemed it an act worthy of reward rather than of punishment. But because I did what I have done in the name of those who are helpless and oppressed, it has been called by another name. <laughs> Governor. Captain Brown? Yes. I'm Governor Wise of Virginia. Oh, I believe we met at the first question. I hope they have been kind to you in the prison here. It was my instruction. Yes, very kind. I thank you all. Naturally, I cannot approve your actions nor the beliefs which prompted them, Mr. Brown. But you did what you believed was right, with courage, humanity, and integrity of purpose. I would like to shake your hand. Goodbye, John Brown. Goodbye, sir. Are you ready, Captain? Yes, quite ready. This way, Captain Brown. What a great crowd of people. I had no idea my hanging would be such an event. I... This way, Captain. The scaffold is well made. Your Virginia Pine, I believe. Here's your prisoner, Sheriff. Stand over here, please. Certainly. No, wait. Don't put the blindfold on just yet. Well, what is it? Nothing. Just the hills from here. And the morning sun. God, this... This is a beautiful country. John Brown of Osawatomie, a zealous firebrand who flashed across the country in an angry time. Ageless reminder that principle and conviction are the things for which men live and die. It is this spirit, shaped by time, guided by wisdom and law, that still flames in all the people of this land. And it is this spirit we salute on the Cavalcade of America. Our thanks to John McIntyre and the Cavalcade players for their performance of John Brown of Osawatomie on the Cavalcade of America. And now the DuPont Company brings you its story. Tonight's story from the wonder world of chemistry is about a few of the diverse ways in which chemical research helps to make and keep you healthy. 
A new health weapon invented in a DuPont laboratory and made available to industry at large is an electric nose that works much as does an electric eye. Industrial workers using volatile solvents are sometimes endangered by the fumes. This electric nose, an ultraviolet photometer, detects the presence of as little as two drops of certain solvents in an average-sized room, thus permitting scientific control to ensure healthful working conditions. All important in the diagnosis of many diseases is modern X-ray practice. Research is continually carried out in DuPont laboratories to improve X-ray film and make the diagnosticians work even more accurate. Studies in physiological laboratories often make valuable additions to medical knowledge through techniques involving X-ray photography. Thanks to a new method of rendering blood opaque, the X-ray may be used today to photograph blood while it is actually circulating in the veins. Dentists use DuPont film in X-raying your teeth because it is fast and there is little chance of movement blurring the result during a short exposure. Clear X-ray pictures of a broken bone can be made as it knits if the doctor has set it with a splint of lucite, methyl methacrylate resin plastic, that crystal clear, light, practically unbreakable substance made by the chemist from coal, air, and water. The fact that lucite does not appreciably absorb X-rays is one of its unique advantages for this use. The most intriguing talent of lucite, transmitting light around curves, makes it ideal for self-illuminating instruments which are a source of cool light in whatever spots the doctor, dentist, or surgeon wishes to illuminate. Today, one manufacturer of medical equipment alone supplies more than 50 different lucite instruments to dentists, surgeons, and physicians. And so this crystal clear substance, which began by making the world simply a handsomer place, is now making it a more healthful place as well. It is on a thousand fronts that advances are made for your better health by scientists working to bring you better things for better living through chemistry. And now, Ted Jewett of the Cavalcade Players to tell you about next week's program. Ladies and gentlemen, next week we shall present a play written by the noted author Stephen Vincent Benet, starring Raymond Massey known everywhere for his portrayal of Abe Lincoln in Illinois. The story will be one never told before, the story of the 3,000-mile unfortified borderline that divides the United States and Canada. The title of the play is The Undefended Border. Cavalcade of America feels especially proud of the privilege of bringing to you so great a star in so great a play, built around a historic fact that carries with it the greatest hope for the future of our world. Thank you. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is Clayton Collier, sending best wishes from DuPont. This is the National Broadcasting Company.